Okay, so sorry for the way. Um, I went live and then Streamlabs completely and utterly died on me. But I got it back up now. I was going to change the box for this game is so small for me. I was going to change it and then I thought it's just going to mess up again on Streamlabs and I'm going to have to do something else. I don't want to do anything else right now. Um, every time I click out of the box, by the way, the sound's going to go. Oh, like that, unfortunately. Uh, let's bring it back up. But yeah, the, small, the box is very small for me today, so I will be probably clicking out of it a lot. Actually, I am going to try to make it make it bigger. It's just going to... I just... No. Right, I'm going to be clicking out of it a lot. Sorry. So we're playing the second Simon Max game, mainly because I couldn't figure out what else I wanted to play, to be honest, so... If you can't make it, I might play some Stardew later on if he shows up at the end of the screen. I didn't change the sound either. I completely forgot. I'll turn that down in a second. Jeopardy packs droging and butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You will never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? Wake Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you guess. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. <laughs> I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly, I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away. We're at our earliest convenience. Great. I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. For those of you who weren't at the last stream or didn't see the last vod on the website, um... Wait a minute, let me just turn the sound down. I think I had it about there last time. You crack me up, little buddy. You crack me up, little um, buddy. Simon Max is a cooking point adventure game by Telltale Games. I think we read that it was from 2006, the first series. This is the second one. Um, the story of it was foreshadowed at the end of the first one we saw one of Myra's aud um, audience being hypnotized which is like the theme of the series really so yeah it's got really dark dry humor nothing useful in here very funny one of these days we're gonna finish that game I'm still working on getting the rest of the darts from the police impound Hubert doesn't look so hot, Max. He doesn't look any worse than he did two months ago. I'm only going to click a lot of things because I'm eating a Kit Kat. These donuts must be three months old. Don't throw that out! I'm saving it for a science experiment. You bet, little buddy. What do you mean? The reception's perfect right now. America to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer. We don't need non-dairy creamer. Hmm. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled 
when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep? It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer someday. That's more like it. You see, there's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a slouch up. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well adjusted. Ow. I don't like sleeping. No one needs sleep. A very disturbed individual sits here. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? Anybody home? No. Guess not. So one thing I really like about the game is that after every episode, you kind of get like a trophy. So we've got Brady Culture's hair from the first game. Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh so enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. But I keep like clicked on a lot of these things. Some of them um actually have like different interactions. I didn't really in the first game, so there's no point in this one. But yeah, we've got a street free of soda poppers. And it's still the same street. With the same two shops on it. Sybil's and Bosco's Inconvenience. Alien Love Triangle Times. Looks like they're sold out. Has been Brady Culture behind bars. He finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. Hm. I've had worse. I always look like going to see Bosco first, he's my favourite. What ho, Samuel? <laughs> Maximilian? What the? You're probably wondering how I know your name. Not really. Psst. It's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom the Third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <laughs> Just the way he reacted, it's English. <gasps> no, really, what made you convert to British? It's because everybody's got an in for me, that's why. Yeah, we heard. They do, they I do. I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. Oh, they'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs. So yeah, this is like the start of Bosco kind of dressing up to hide from random conspiracies. It's why he's my favorite. He's just very funny. What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man. They're after me. Skin bodies? Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh no. The skin bodies are like skinheads, but ten times worse. Sure they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah, maybe a hundred times. <laughs> maybe a million. <laughs> Don't make it worse, Max. I'm Sam even. These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're stealing my, I mean, pinching my shaving cream. Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Of course. Sounds legit. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from b -Tag. Meaning nothing stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. Dash it all! I knew I forgot huh. something! What did you say those skin bodies were doing? 
they're pinching my shaving cream. They're pinching my shaving cream. We want to buy something. Mm, yes, mm, uh, quite so, quite so. What have you got? Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the blooming skin bodies haven't got yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's mm. funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why huh. don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. Sounds useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see. Uh, 30 shillings <laughs> would be about 1 million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Worth One million every shilling, dollars. Trust me, trust me. One million. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? No. I'm sorry, I've got to do this again. Do you have any fine leather jackets? No. Do you have any gumballs the size of your head? No. Do you have any plus two plate armor of limitless squeezeability? No. Do you have any Pez dispensers with the head of infamous Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa? No. Do you have any ketchup? No. Uh, oh, wait. Got you. Ha. Huh. Blast. Drat. Dash it all! We got him. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Hands in the air, Bosco. You're coming with us. Good heavens! What is the meaning of this? We're taking you in for masquerading as a man of class and distinction. What the devil? Surely you jest. Yes, surely we do. On the bright side, now you can add the police to your long list of paranoia-induced nightmare subjects. Piss off, piffle, piss off. Now I'm going to sound saying piss off. Hip, hip. Honey nut cheerio. Honey nut cheerio. With liverwurst. Want some? Absolutely not. I think it's the tinge of green that makes this coffee especially appealing. I take my coffee green, like my men. I like green men. Max, green men I've are got all right. Great idea involving you, a microwave, and six feet of aluminum foil. Go on. Maybe another time. One day, one day we will see this. We'll go see Sybil before we go to the TV studio. Wait a minute. She runs a tabloid rag. A tabloid rag. She's one of them. Sam, Max, how nice to see you. I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Yes. Yes, by which I mean, huh? huh. It's my new career. I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. Nice name. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. 
Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. I mean, Simon Max a ginormous dog in a tiny murderous rabbit. Aliens aren't that surprising. Really? When you come to think of it. How about a quick analysis? For old time's sake. Oh, alright. Think of a number between one and four. Three and a half. You're selectively audio averse. I don't like the sound of that. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, The Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover Keep photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed <laughs> masses calls them. Unwashed mass. Hot getting cozy I am with some of the locals. Mass. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. Me too, and I like it. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it. It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No. What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. True, true, true. Alien facts. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Yeah, that's Frankly, what it so, was. This project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. Oh my god. Ugh. Who else is an is alien? Is anybody Come else on. an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Anyone else? Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Anyone? Is anybody else an alien that we might not Tell know about? Tell me the names. Yes. Ugh. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. Keep watching the supplies. Right, so we need to get a million dollar dues or 30 shillings. For, for Bosco, and we need a picture of us having an affair with an alien. For Sybil. And all can be found, of course, in a TV studio. Which we get to by driving, but thankfully I don't think we actually have to drive drive. Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. A TV studio. Goody. Well, here we are, Max. The TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. WARP. Television so mindless, you can't help but watch. <laughs> Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. <laughs> you crack me up, little buddy. I want to smack things. Why can't I smack things? I'm missing out on smacking things. I love the way Max walks around. Look, look at him, and you can hear the little gobs of his little feet. Look at him march around. Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. <laughs> We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. 
Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! The director! Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Whoa! Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next! Who's next? Oops. Right, one, I am opening a pack of peanuts and I've just broken the pack. Two, how weird is it to have a joke being nasty towards Keanu Reeves in this day and age? Because he is like the world's most beloved person to be honest everyone loves Keanu Reeves and that Al I love to see him in toast you don't seem to understand we're highly untrained police officers highly untrained look hats off for dedication guys but I'm just not buying the police act I feel so invalidated <laughs> we're looking for Myra Stump the darling hawk of do not mention that name in my presence which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative and she isn't. <laughs> what a bitch. I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra, why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less? If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. Yeah. What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago, and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours. Yes. Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. It is. We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Yeller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me! And boy. Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready? I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? What's my motivation? You're a mad dog. Now, show me rabbit. Uh, uh. No, dig dig. You should be just frothing mad. Hmm. Hmm. Cut! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm not hiring a dog who can't even do a simple rabidity scene. I don't know what went wrong. I was feeling so rabid. You look pretty disease-ridden to me. Come back after you've taken a few thousand acting lessons. Can we just steal the shaving cream? Was well, that the point of the beetard thing? It was because we can just steal it now. We're not a lot, we're a duo. I could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Hard up, pig, dog, pig dog. Pig dog? Skin bodies rule the street. Blast, buggle, blimey, bally. The little Bullet. ladder did it again. After him, I mean, tell me who. Tally ho, fool. Holly Whole Foods.
We even got Raffin in the car. Where are we going, Sam? Hey! <laughs> the skin buddies hit me, Sam! After those rats. After the rats. Gotta get them down the mantle cover, I think. Shoot him, there we go. Hey, the shaving cream! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Yeah, hold on tight, little buddy. Where are we, we going, it. Sam? We did it. The TV studio. Goody! This audition. Hello again. Yes. Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Rabbit. Brilliant. Now that's what I call diseased. Thank you. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people who... Zip it. Okay, Max. You've just realized your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're grief-stricken. Now, show me the emotion. Uh, boo-hoo? Huh. <laughs> you call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a national Botox reserve. Grief, I said. Give me grief. Uh... But you can be so over dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay. Uh oh. <gasps> oh. Idiot. What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my hat, or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bravo. Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! Yes! Head we got hired! We can begin filming immediately. Let's My hurry, dudes. Sam. We only We're have 14 actors. minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. Midtown Cowboys. All right, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. What an insult, fat face. Weren't you just... 
I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. <laughs> I knew you guys were right for the show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboy, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor. I think I can remember. Globe Theater and all that. Just set him up to do something what funny, and he'll handle it from there. Check. I think. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script, and it's really important to work it in, because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to save the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max, your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. <laughs> I like it already. Wait a minute. Sorry, I didn't realize that. I was missing the bottom part of the screen. There we go. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember. Your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Let there be light. Hey! Right, you put the lampshade on the cow. Oh. Open up! On Open the up. cow. I know you're hiding There a cow. we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you got a well, well, well. Who's it looks your like guest, Chris boys? Evans. The um British Chris Evans, not the cool American one. This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la <laughs> And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. <laughs> oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know? It was back in my army days. Right, then you need the play. Goodness, who left this lying here? Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Say, what's this? You said? He said Mugu Gai Pan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Oh, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Aha! Uh. Mm, interesting. No, not it's interesting. One way there's a familiar flavor. Fennel. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> this moo-moo 
whatever stuff is really good. What's it called in English? Chow pie. <laughs> really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like... <laughs> <laughs> Now? Now. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. We did it! We did it! Going to love it. We had our 15 minutes! I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Don't call me. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Yeah, let's do that. So, like, there's a couple rooms you have to go through. It's this one. Then there's a cooking one. There's one with, like, a Hugh... No, he is called Hugh Bliss. I was going to say Brady Culture, but he's called Hugh Bliss. Because I always get them two mixed up anyway. And, um... It's like a singing one. Um give me one second. Do, 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 do. Wait a minute, I just gotta reply to something quickly. Sorry about that. Still press the wrong button first. There we go.
So, in the cooking one... What is it I need to do in the cooking one? Well, I need to cook, obviously. Um, do I need to make a cake? It's someone's birthday, I need to make a cake. It's one of the soda poppers' birthdays. What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Is there a big demand for that? You'd be amazed. Where's the host? Is he in watching the Myra show? No, he's one of the few who isn't. He got food poisoning while he was taping last week's show. Right in the middle, in fact. Was it gruesome? Yes, and unfortunately, this show goes out live. Hey, Amanda. Why is your username Manda Panda Big? I'm happy you got a, tw a Twitch account, but why that username? If anyone in the pod wants to know, Manda Panda is usually um, Amanda. She does the Doctor Who reviews. She's going to be doing reviews on Lock and Key, um, which I'm editing at the minute, along with Lucius's. Witcher reviews because we're so late behind on them because we just didn't watch it until like the last couple weeks um, She also runs the Twitter. I do have a cat like I do have the Twitter on my phone now because I'm meant to tweet out more when I'm writing the reviews on the anime to try to get the anime interaction up a little bit, but I'm not very good at Twitter, so I don't know why she bothered giving it to me so yeah. Hey, Amanda. How do you do that teleportation trick where you're always everywhere ahead of us? Trade secret, honey. How do you keep it so clean in here? The complete absence of anything resembling food is helpful. Names are hard. All right. Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No. It's broadcast live. We don't tape it. Aren't there fruits or vegetables of any sort around here? Just the crew. Ha! <laughs> I never get tired of that one. Okay, actually, no. We strive for realism, and the average bachelor kitchen doesn't contain any natural plant life except mold. That, that could be true. That could be true. See ya. Probably. So I think we just start. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. It's a fake. Welcome to there Cooking we Without Looking, the cooking, cooking show for the looking. typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, yeah, these guys. Yeah, alright, I get that. But you just look like my just kind of big. Oh, um, hello, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious <laughs> I'm cooking better to do, than you. so let's get right to it. He is better what than What are we making, us. Sam? Cake. Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. All right. We got squid tentacles, wombat secretions, buffalo chips, sulfuric acid, hair gel, MSG, roof and tile shards, pink mink oil, tweed, uranium pellets, dried dingo kidneys, asbestos sprinkles, lard, mung paste, and red dye number two. I'm gonna have to use sprinkles. Of course, who could forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches. Real kitchens use it too. Should we do red dye as well? include red dye number two. If there's not at least some possibility of malignant tumors, it's not real bachelor cooking. <laughs> I'm such a max, my little chaotic buddy. Shit. Of all people, she will tell you that I am awful. No more than a dash of uranium pellets. 
They also go great in Chex Mix. Thank you for following your own Twitch channel. Thank you, man. Now, Let's do we cook boil it. it, Sam? I put some uranium right you in. You are, little buddy. Into right, the you are, little goes. buddy. And through the magic of TV cooking show time, one gorgeous, delicious cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. Right, we've got a cake. I'm pretty this sure this fridge isn't even a fridge. It's I'm a pretty fake. sure it's someone's birthday. I think it's a soda popper's birthday. Midtown Cowboys is that way. We can't go anywhere that way. Green cack. Yeah, we've got green cack. Best kind of cack, really. So, maybe through that? Oh, yeah, game show door. There you go. Oh, it's a game show! Who's never going to be a millionaire? Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Hugh Bliss? No, Hugh Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm <laughs> leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I'm Hugh yeah, Bliss. I'm and Hugh Bliss. you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. <laughs> How do you know? So, yes, Hugh it's Bliss. Hugh Bliss. What brings you to WARP? I, too, am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 don't you see? To be I fair, your mind. we did come As through the door and go, we've got to go and see Thomas Myra. As this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. Uh... Six million three hundred seventy-three thousand four hundred eleven point nine eight. Sam, lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh, think of something else. <laughs> Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well. I must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous farce. Stop it. <laughs> do me, do me. <laughs> oh, oh my. And that's unspeakably depraved. Yeah, you got it. Wow, you're amazing. He is amazing. Why do you want to see Myra? What's your business with Myra? I'm to be a guest on her show, silly. Yeah, silly. I'm spreading the word about my new book, Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Take a copy when you leave. Can you just give us the ten word summary instead? We're on a pretty tight schedule. Ten words? Oh my! How about prismatology is the answer? Unicorns are pretty and rainbows too. Unicorns and rainbows. So, like, he's got this rainbow happiness book thing. One thing I got today, my one of my work besties, Ruthie, she bought me a wellness planner, which I'll put up on the website later tonight. But it's like, it's got a weekly planner. So, like, it starts off with you, you write on the front, the first page, what you'd like to achieve, what I'd like to feel, and other goals for the year. And then it goes into, like, week things. So, like, you've got a week for every week of the year, obviously. And you, you have, like, a week's mantra. Then you've got to write three things that you're grateful for. One thing you want to achieve for the week. Then you've got a mood tracker for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You've got a box for like the things you've got to put down to remember. 
Um, the mood track is like little faces, so like you draw happy face, sad face, or whatever. Then underneath that, you've got like plans. So like you can put, I'm working this day, or I'm gonna do this that day. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna just put, post a picture of that on um, the Twitter every single day, every single week, to let you know when I'm gonna stream. Maybe not when I'm gonna work though. I might put the stream in first. Um, then there's like note, notes and doodles, which seeing I'm starting to war um, draw again, that might be useful. Um, what else have we got? We've got, have I had enough? So like, they've got little tick spot, bleh, bleh, bleh. little tick boxes for like, have you had enough sunshine slash daylight, social interaction, sleep, never get enough sleep, water, never get enough water, and relaxation time. And then also you've got me time, so you've got like, you can listen, like a, a list for listen, read, watch, do. Sounds great. It, it is really pretty. It's so, so pretty as well, the way they've done it. And, um, yeah, it, it, it should help a little bit. But not only that, at the back, like, that's like what you've got through the majority of the book. So it's like... basically like some kind of diary but then at the book you've got back you've got meal planning so like again every single page is a or that's a double page for the diary bit but the rest of it is like a week on a page and then you've got monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday blah 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 blah, blah. but it's got like it's separating to like breakfast lunch dinner snacks exercise and then it's got like water intake, so like you can tick off or colour in or whatever you want to do, like little cups of water, and then fruit and veg intake as well, so you can tick or colour off that you've had your five a day. It's really, really, really pretty. I can't even begin to explain how pretty. But yeah, I got that. I even, because it's got like one of those this book belongs to this person, things at the front. My sister bought me a um, quill for Christmas. Um, like a proper Harry Potter one with like dipping ink and all that. And um, I had opened that for the first time and used that to put my name in. Unfortunately, my name is very small and it wasn't that impressive looking. But um, yeah, sounds like something that will benefit you. Well, it's what I used to do. like. 2018, in the beginning of last year, I had like a depression diary. But the thing is, like I had to set that out every month myself, and I was trying to be, I guess, too smart with it and like make interesting things so that I kept my interest through the month. The problem was that if I wasn't motivated to do that at the beginning of the month, then I put it off and I put it off. And if I missed a couple of days here and there. I got depressed because I spent so much time making it. So this is just a lovely little book. Like I'm going to see if I can find more of them online so that I can buy a couple. Because they're only 2 99 They weren't at the Aldi's up by my sister's though. I don't know what Aldi my friend goes to but we didn't have them in the store that um, is up by my sister's. So I'm kind of hoping that they'll be online so I can just buy a couple of them and then I just have them indefinitely for the rest of my life. What's the story of this prismatology flap doodle? Prismatology is only the greatest intellectual, emotional and spiritual revolution ever to grace this fair planet. Thank goodness we have someone who can give an impartial assessment. Shh. Tell us more. Join Prismatology today and you too can experience the magic of true bliss. That goes against everything I've ever hoped for. And yet now I'm strangely attracted to the notion. Snap out of it, little buddy. We've got a case to solve. Thank you. I tried. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre. No, Mo. Mo. Sienna. Mo. Uh, how about a color I've heard of? <laughs> Pick a color, as, as long, long as, as it's red, red green, green, or blue. blue. Well, we need green, obviously. It's not easy being green. 
Oh, but it it's is with magic. Green. I love Carmen. Ah, not I know what green. you're thinking. Is it real? real? My favorite is stream is illusion. Say, you bless. Can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He, hence the camera. <laughs> now gather round. But how will you take the picture? By magic. Okay. Say, chocolate covered puppies. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate covered, covered puppies. puppies. <gasps> so where's the picture, smile. magic man? Oh, my. Oh, I seem to have misplaced it. Hmm. Check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. <laughs> <laughs> that M Mika song, Grace Kelly. Yeah, I think it is called Grace Kelly. Oh, I love that song. I was listening to it the other day. Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? <laughs> yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. Okay. I still love you. <sighs> Oh, right. yeah. Game show. We've got a contestant, people. Hit it. From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire with special guest host Hugh Bliss. I could be a millionaire, everyone. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max. Listen, Sam, they love us. Welcome. You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire. Start loading the armored cars, Hugh. Because huh. my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true! Oh, he's so cute! Okay, are you ready? Yes! Oh, happy day. It's an easy one! If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? What? I'm gonna go with my gut and say, Hugh Bliss. I'm flattered, but no, that is completely wrong. You lose! Aww. This is an outrage. I demand a recount. We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss. Yes, I get a book. No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Aww. Okay! Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages. I want rainbow teleportation powers. Yeah, easy. Let's do maths in the home. It's an easy question. Oh. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. I just completely clicked out the window. Okay. Embarrassing idol. This is where the soda poppers are. I'm pretty sure it's where the soda poppers are. I just don't see how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? 
Hmm. I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make me, uncomfortable me, entertainment me. out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! <laughs> I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. Peepers! The annoying Am one. I blue? Who are you? Can, Can I, I fly? fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly liked how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Yay! That's not even worth a comment. Can I look at these? Sure, take them. I've got them memorized. Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. So I think what we got to do is swap Hugh Bliss's color to blue and swap those cards around. We've got this, we've got this. Uh... Hey, a perfect fit. Yeah, let's turn him blue. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I challenge you to change colors again. Okay, pick a color. Any color. Blue. Do blue, Hugh. Oh. Bye. Bye. Another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. These guys. Okay, are you ready? Hmm. The question is, am I blue? Yes. Yes, you. Yes, you are. Well, what do you know? That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a millionaire! We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. I don't believe it. Well, this is it's awkward, but we don't board, actually yeah. have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. They're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep fried licorice ropes with food stamps? Huh. We'll take it. One, two, three, 174, 175, 999,999, and a million. Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. Alright, back to the street. Where am I going? Oh, 
have a look at some Telltale games being out there. Hi, Mom. The scenery is never easy to get around. There you go. We can have the scandal of Hubris because we've got a little green man in between us. And we're technically famous. Nah. Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo is a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. And we can use the food stamps to get whatever the voice modulator. That voice modulator. It's sad and mad. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? I've got monitors you don't even know about. Who will love this? There you go. We want to buy something. Quite so. We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps? I suppose I must accept them. Both the Dutch government conspiracy. It's hogwash! Complete cod swallow! Here, then, is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works! Trust me, trust me! Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works! Thanks, Bosco! Right, now to win the singing competition. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Wizard's birthday. Am I really walking all the way around just to talk to him? No. Well, well, peepers, you underdeveloped former non psychotherapist, you. What a treat to run across you again. I'm not sure if I ever properly thanked you for hitting me over the head recently. Repeatedly. No gratitude necessary. Just doing our jobs. Sure.
I'm dying to know, is there any truth to the rumors about lip syncing on the old soda poppers TV show? We only did that on the released version. How do you manage to hit those eardrum scarring high notes? If you're implying that I use any artificial vocal enhancements, I don't! What you hear is pure peepers! That's almost Ugh. exactly what I would have said! Your lyrics have an intriguingly vapid quality. <laughs> Did you write them yourself? Of course! Any similarity to lyrics from other wildly popular songs is meant as homage, not theft! I'll leave you to whatever it is you're doing over here. Good luck! I need a bribe. Um, wizard, I think. Last time we saw you, you and your diminutive former child star brothers were in the thrall of a megalomaniac hypnotist with bad hair. What have you been up to since then? Well, after you hit us over the head, repeatedly, our careers have taken an upswing. Clearly. Hey, being a judge on Embarrassing Idol is a tremendous opportunity. I'm feeling the magic already. Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity. I'm voting for Peepers no matter <laughs> what. He's my brother. The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add. I said I was sorry. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks. I'm glad somebody remembered. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? A treat would be nice. Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. What kind of perks go with this gig? Yeah, it was right. Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by collar? Ooh, craft services food. Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like <laughs> everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes. A basket of tomatoes. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Wait. Enjoy your judging. You have to cover Catch this you later. Uh-huh. Back to boss goes. But these games, um, no. To be fair, I played this one and the first one not that long ago. A little ketchup is always good on a cake. But, um, I only ever played most of them through once. I was actually surprised with how much I remembered of, um... We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin Kids misbehaving now? Begin. Which is the old DOS game. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody!
Happy birthday. Oh, boy! Birthday cake! That red frosting looks tasty. Excuse me. Oh, that was really... Oh, uh, uh, really? Uh, uh oh. Time out for number two! What the darn it? He'd better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me! I can't do the annoying voice. I'm gonna sing. Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please welcome our next us. contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Busted down hound dog blues. Love has a thorny backside. Bottleneck of the freeway of doom. Just like someone else's song, only somehow better. Just like someone else's song, only somehow better. <coughs> I am in terrible torment. I am unbelievably happy. I am cryptic and therefore deep. I am more successful than you. May the starfish justice not impure. My girl's the greatest thing since sliced bread. My girl's cheating on me. I've solved life's greatest mystery, but I'm not telling. I'm cooler and hipper than you will ever be. Playing cocktail angst on my pursuit. I think no matter what you cook, it's the same. Pity me, admire me. Let me remind you of what remind you that I write songs. I'll say anything just to make it rhyme. Pity Road me. to someday, bits of me are strewn. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peeper's is still getting my vote. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. And we're cut. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances. That's not what I wanted. Testing. One, two, three. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... I'm gonna still do the same. Just like someone else's song, only oh, somehow so better. <clears throat> right, I'm more successful than you. Chomping on a crunchy silver spoon. Playing cocktail angst on my pursuit. Blowing like a zephyr on a dune. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy huh. than my brother is. You got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner. Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. Ben Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. <laughs> Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol. I never noticed there's a little picture for the narrator down in the bottom. La fish.
Right, so we'll go to the game show and go through. We're nearly at the end of this one. I thought I was going to struggle because I didn't remember it as well as the first one. It's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! <coughs> Yourself. How about letting your hostages go now? What do you say? Hostages? They're my guests! You know, if there's one that fries my burger, it's the rampant victim culture in American media today. Oh, boo-hoo! Myra's audience all got luxury minivans. Now they have to worry about where they're going to park. Bah! I know what you mean, Myra. It's like I'm always telling people, don't think of it as a bullet wound. Think of it as a transfusion opportunity. Seriously, we're officers of the law, more or less, and we'll have to insist that you free the hostages. Of course. Just as soon as the show's over. And when is that exactly? Oh, who can say? We still have so many gifting opportunities. I just found a year's supply of industrial strength soap backstage. <laughs> I think I'll give that away, or else have a valuable lesson on curing potty mouth. Can we come in and they see the show? You. Can know. you? I Don't know. you mean... Uh, may we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. I want to be a guest. Can't... May we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition, or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last <laughs> week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording contract and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet, <laughs> but I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. A show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? We do have a recording contract. Bin Bottom Records. Take a look. Now how about having us appear on your show? Not so fast. To get on my stage, you'll also need a clip from your own TV show as well as evidence of a good scandal. Fame is a distressingly exact mistress. We got it. There you we go, got, dear. Although it. I strongly disapprove, having a mistress is an excellent start to a scandal. The public <laughs> enjoys a good love triangle. As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Hmm. Your celebrity is becoming less and less marginal all the time. Don't worry, Myra. We're still marginal at heart. Yes, I suspect it as much. But get yourselves involved in a newsworthy scandal, and you can be guests. Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking, and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but <laughs> I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Good on you, Max. Good on you. 
Love triangle, uh, two bliss. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Give her a hand, everyone. Bessie Bobine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood. Out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse. But that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, canceled. who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end. But that bear has got you. Sit. We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. You're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So yes. naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. Let's have a look at that one. I'd like to sing a song from my upcoming album, Feathers, Feathers and, and Furious, Furious Scribbling. Scribbling. I'm almost certain the audience might probably enjoy that. Howling at that drippy old <laughs> She's at brunch today with some. I need to do the inhaler again. That's what I need to do. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. This sounds like me singing. Thank you, Sam, for putting the numb back in musical number. Mm, what numb. a wonderful way to remind our audience that you don't have to be talented to be famous. And a perfect segue into my latest tirade about the lamentable state of modern popular music. I mean, blah, 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 yak, 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 yak bloody, 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 yak, 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 yak. Blah, 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 right. yak, 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 bloody, 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 yak, 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 blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 bloody. I'd like to sing, if I may. Is that wise? Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. Whoa! Careful there, Tiger! That was wonderful! I'm so moved I almost don't have a long hectoring screen in me! Oh no, wait! There it is! Thank goodness! Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah 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 yak 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 yak! Blah 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 yak 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 yak! I'm not yak, touching yak, that yak, thing. Blah, I'd blah, probably blah, get yak, shot. Yak, 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 um, yak, yak, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ah, yes. Where were we? Oh, I yes. think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. Uh... I'd like to talk about that charming yet mildly insidious-looking bear on your desk. Can I see it? I don't know, Sam. Can you? <laughs> May I see it, please? No, you may not. And if I may say so, if there's one thing that grills my chicken, it's how our culture is in a state of modal decay. Can is not the same as may. Should is not the same as blah, blah, blah. Yak, blah, 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 blue, blue, blue. Blah, 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 I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. Nasty. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it Obviously seems. Obviously they don't, though, because so? they sell out the paper. <coughs> It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking. Who? Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. The cow. Oh my. Audience, shall we bring her back out again? At the risk of did making it. the obvious comment, that was shocking. Is she we did it. A little, but the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts. 
I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another yeah, we glorious won. dream we won bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. Game's been won. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. I'm kidding. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette <laughs> butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Wow. Bread logs make me logy. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. <laughs> So yeah, again that um, horror shadows what happens in the next game, the Toy Mafia. But that is another Sam and Max run. We did it. So yeah, I, I might put Stardew on for a little bit, um, let me see, let me see, I'm going to stop the recording, I somehow binded the recording button with the end button at some point, so if I go offline, I will come back online, um, for YouTube, this is the end of this one, but I will be back in a second if I mess this up, I will be back, give me two seconds. <laughs> 